Sean Hook's Newsmaker Saturday starts now. Thanks for joining us on Newsmaker Saturday. This week, we're going to talk about the crisis at the border with two different sheriffs in Arizona who are seeing this firsthand. Last month, Border Patrol apprehended 172,000 migrants along the southwest border, which is a slight decrease, just less than 1% from April. But you've got to go back 21 years to April of 2000 to find a month in which Border Patrol apprehended more migrants along the U.S. border with Mexico. We're first joined by the sheriff of Cochise County, Mark Daniels. He's been the sheriff going on 10 years now. You share about an 84-mile border with Mexico, correct? That's right, John, and thanks for having me on your show. You're welcome. It's good to see you. And uh, by the way, um, as of Thursday, uh, you had a pretty wild, and I, and I want to express our, our sympathies to uh, what, what goes on, you know, just in law enforcement every day. You had several of your, your deputies and DPS involved in a pretty n nasty shootout near Wilcox. Is everybody okay? Everybody's doing fine. Thank you, John, for the, the support and the thoughts on that. And uh, we're very fortunate we didn't lose an officer from Highway Patrol that was actually shot. He's doing well, uh, appears to be a full recovery, and then uh, my deputy. So, yeah, it was a, it was a very horrific event, and uh, I'm just blessed that they're here with us today. This has nothing to do with border security, right? This is separate and apart from any kind of um, illegal activity from, you know, narco stuff to... Uh, human smuggling, nothing connected to that. And that is correct, John. You are right on that. It's, it's the things we do, you know, the general crime that we deal with, but it does not have a border nexus at this time. Okay. You were part of the Biden transition team, so you're trying to help the new administration come up to speed on this issue. What What's happening? I mean, you, you told them what you thought, what you thought needed to be done, and I think you were encouraged by what you heard back from the administration. You're correct on that, John. You know, as part of the National Sheriff Association, I've had the opportunity twice, back in 2016 up to uh, 2020, where I was asked by the National Sheriffs to sit on the transition team for border for the Biden uh, team. And, and I was very optimistic and talking about what is working on the border, the collective efforts, uh, the partnerships, the relationships, working with Washington, D.C., Department of Homeland Security, our governors, all the way down to our community level leadership in our communities. And uh, so I was very optimistic after that meeting. And what are you seeing now, Sheriff? I know you're concerned about what's happening in your county right now. What are you seeing on the ground? Well, first of all, we're seeing uh, covert smuggling. In my county, uh, different to what you see on national media with the, the hundreds of family members, unaccompanied minors coming through Texas, in my county, which is part of the Tucson sector, this fiscal year, we've had over 60,000 getaways. These are people that have been spotted on cameras, the Border Patrol cameras, that have been spotted wearing camouflage, covert smuggling, and have got away into the United States. And currently what we see on the southwest border right now is 1,100 getaways a day. These are people that we have no idea who they are. Tucson sector, my sector, leads the nation in getaways. So we get the covert smuggling. I think it's a national security issue and it's a community public safety issue throughout this country and in my county. Well, it's interesting you mention that because my understanding is more than 30 times as many uh, non-Mexican, non-Northern Triangle nationals were encountered by CBP along the southwest border. So we are seeing others coming in. What is that all about? Is this just uh, people who want to come into the United States from other nations? Is there a criminal part of this? What, what's going on? Well, John, you're hitting on a good perspective. I'm, I'm glad you're hitting on that. Seventy plus countries have hit the southwest border trying to get in our in, in our country from the southwest border. Seventy different countries. And who are these people? These are the ones we've identified that have been captured. What about the 1,100 a day or the 60,000 just in my section of the state, the southeast corner of the state, that are getting away in our country? We don't know who they are. That is a national security issue that concerns me. We know, we know that not everybody coming in the country is here for a better way of life. They're here as a threat to the quality of life Americans uh, have embraced over the years. Do you see that in Cochise County? I mean, do you feel the criminality has increased with all of this border activity? Oh, it has, John. I mean, since 
uh, let me go back and, I, and I'll just put this disclaimer out there right away to your to your listeners and viewers is the fact that politics has no business in policing, whether it be in Cochise County, whether it be in downtown Chicago. Unfortunately, it's sprinkled with it right now. It's divided policing this country and the opinions are rampant. We know our, our pursuits are up, our trespass issues are up, our uh, smuggling's up. I mean, huge in my county. To give you an example, we have a virtual camera system in Cochise County and beyond. Last year at this time, we had 300 to 400 illegal entries off our camera system, system alone um, in every month. Manual control, we called it. Since January 1 to end of May, We've had over 15,301 illegal entries, over 800 pounds of illicit drugs, and over 40 drug smugglers. These are not human smugglers. These are the drug smugglers. And then you compound that with the human smuggling aspect, with the pursuits, the folks being recruited by the cartels that come down in our communities, infecting our communities. It's a real challenge right now in Cochise County okay, and beyond. And I don't want to put you in a political box because I know you want to stay above the political fray, but I do. it is an inescapable conclusion that there is a shift in policy that is driving these numbers. Can, can anybody deny that? Nobody can deny that. And I tell people all the time, this is not about politics. I, I've been policed for 37 years in this county. And one thing I've always said, I never police for politics. I police for people. And I'm talking to my counterparts, there's a, a standard in law enforcement that we do that based on our oath of office. And when I hear somebody say, oh, it's just about politics, the stats speak for themselves, John. When you got 60,000 getaways, you have 1,100 a day, you have 800 pounds of illicit drugs. My county alone, over the last several years, we have a 100% conviction rate for drug smugglers. And we were one of the safest, if not the safest county on the southwest border of the 31 border counties. I can't sit here today and tell you that anymore. And that's a shame because it starts with messaging and prioritization to secure our borders. Sheriff, you say 1,100 getaways a day. Cochise County is only, I mean, that's only 84 miles of a 500 mile border. So what are we to extrapolate of what's going on statewide if you're seeing 1,100 getaways? Well, I say this and I'll say it again to you too, John, is the fact that what happens in my county happens in your communities too. They're doing everything they can to get through our frontline defense, working with our federal partners, our, our governor, our state uh, police, all the folks to stop the smuggling efforts. But they know if they get through Cochise County and into Phoenix, into Tucson and beyond, they're probably got a good chance of getting away. So they'll do whatever it takes. And that's at the expense of my citizens, at the expense of those that wear a badge in this county. Sheriff, uh, you had a, you've got a large section of border wall, some of it yes. constructed during the Trump administration. Then it just stopped cold. Weren't you pushing to at least finish what had been started? Uh, you felt it made a difference? The wall did make a difference? If you talk to any sheriff, any community member, they'll tell you the border wall makes a difference. It truly does. It's a deterrent. It's a physical barrier. It's a symbol of trespass. When President Biden took office, within hours, a stroke of the pen, he stopped uh, the construction of the physical barrier. He also stopped resources, subtraneal uh, technology, and now my border sits in disarray right now. I got cables hanging out of the ground. I got gates that aren't finished. I got openings. I got infrastructure that roads are now in place up on the mountains that no longer were there that were designed to help build the physical barrier. I've said this and I'll say it on your show too is we have to conclude what we started. If President Biden and his administration do not want to build one more inch of physical barrier, at least be prudent, be reasonable, fix what we started, at least. Uh, conclude it reasonably right now it's not a reasonable did i uh, hear did i it. hear you right sheriff you said they are taking sensors out of the ground that were already there what they've done john is they've they are putting subtraneal sensors and technology in the ground when the president biden uh, declared the southwest border a non-emergency that stopped all construction to include all that technology which means uh those sensors are no longer being activated or being utilized or finished. Sheriff, what's happening with your ranchers down there and the people who actually live right along that border? We keep hearing things and, and I want to get your take on it. Well, John, that's a great question because ultimately that's who this affects is the citizens of my county, the folks that live in the rural parts of Cochise County and beyond. Uh, they're up in arms, John. They're very, very upset. I get calls 24 hours a day. I get pictures on my phone. 
People are upset because the quality of life that we had built over the last several years to make this one of the best counties has now been eroded, which starts, again, I can't say it enough, it starts with the messaging and the consequence-driven action by the federal government, Congress, the administration, and, uh, and those within. And right now, that has changed. When you hear what's happening, the Northern Triangle uh, countries, folks coming here, um, you know, asylum seekers, but a lot of it is economic uh, uh, potential here. There's no doubt about it. Yes. You worked with the Biden administration on the transition. Are, are you right. able to reach out to, to Secretary Mayorkas or anybody within the administration to say, hey, we, we talked about this when you guys took over. We've got to circle back and fix some of this stuff. Are you getting a fair hearing? Is anybody listening to you? What I am seeing is the result, and what we are seeing is the result of President Trump's dismantlement of the safe and orderly immigration processes that were built uh, over many, many years uh, by presidents of both parties. We are working as hard as we are, not only in addressing the urgency of the challenge, uh, but also in building the capacity to manage it. Well, I have met with Secretary Marcus probably about four times, and that is really through Zoom, whether it's in person. We have met. We meet regularly to talk about these issues. Along with me is a handful of other sheriffs that represent southwest border in Texas, uh, Sheriff Wilmot out of Yuma County, and sheriffs from National. That we are sharing this message. We're sharing our stories. We're sharing the challenges and the crisis that's going on in the southwest border. Unfortunately, can I say that has anything changed? No, it hasn't. I commend Secretary Mayorkas to meet with us, but unfortunately, it seems like we're this is intellectual avoidance, and that's what I'll continue to call it until I see a change in what's going on down this uh, border. And remember, John, we're in the middle of a, a health pandemic when this kicked off, and once again, that was a challenge along with public safety, national security, and humanitarian. Let me, uh, you, since you mentioned it, I just want to get one more in here before we let you go. You talked about the health crisis. That gets into Title 42, which yes. the Trump administration used as a pretext uh, to keep people in Mexico because of a health crisis, which was COVID. They would keep yes. people in Mexico and not allow them to, they would wait there for moving forward with an asylum claim. Now, when they come to the border, they're released to the interior to maybe or maybe not show up at a court date that's set maybe a year or two in the future. What do you make of Title 42 and the, and the Biden administration saying, no, we're not going to do that anymore? What do you make of that? Well, well, John, 42 has been, you talk to anybody from Border Patrol, who I call the experts of border security. Title 42 has been the, the anchor to what is going on in the southwest border during this pandemic. Great concerns. Uh, Title 42 is, is set to uh, expire on June 21st. If that expires, we're going to see the same scenarios from covert smuggling to overt, which is just walking across the border like you see in Texas. And that's going to be the big difference. They'll tell you, Border Patrol will tell you, the leadership will tell you all the way up to Washington, D.C. We have to have 42 because of the, the pandemic, number one. That's still a real, real thing here on the border. And I got a feeling that's going to go away. That's one of the last programs President Trump has, still is in effect today. Yeah, and you know, the COVID thing is abating, so I don't know that you can continue on with that, um, the threat of the pandemic to, to Institute 42. I don't know that there's a legal rationale to keep it going. It may have been effective, but as COVID wanes, I don't know how you keep that going. Well, the challenge is to keep it going is less and less. You are right on that, John. Um, unfortunately, I mean, that's that's been our hold we're holding on to that anchor due to the fact is it's worked for us in texas the difference between texas right now with title 42 the state in mexico south of texas will not let them expel back into mexico in south of my county in arizona here the state of sonora still allows us to expel them come to say that's why we have so much covert smuggling here compared to what we see in texas so yeah i'm concerned 42 is going to go away at that point it's going to open up the floodgates uh, Cochise County Sheriff Mark Daniels, we sure appreciate it. Um, Thank you. I know you've got a tough job there on many, many fronts, so we, we appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. Thank you, John. Thanks for having me. Stay safe. Okay. Thank Sheriff you. Daniels, when we come back, we'll move a little further to the uh, interior of Arizona. 
We've got Pinal County Sheriff Mark Lamb to join us to see what happens as uh, people move from the border to the interior of Arizona and points beyond. Sheriff Lamb joins us in a moment on Newsmaker Saturday. Welcome back to Newsmaker Saturday. There's a new sheriff in town. We talked to uh, Sheriff Daniels from Cochise County. Now we're going to talk to Sheriff Mark Lamb, Pinal County. He's been on the job uh, about five years now, right? That's right, John. Good Thanks for having you. me. You Anytime. Thank you. All right. We talked to Sheriff Daniels right on the border. Um, what's your experience in Pinal County? Because obviously you're our neighbor in Maricopa County, but You've seen a lot of stuff. I want to get your take on what is happening along the border, how it impacts even in the interior to central Arizona, Pinal County. Yeah, John, thanks for bringing me on to talk about this. And just so people understand the logistics, Pinal County is located between Phoenix and Tucson. We are not on the border, but we are about 60 miles north of the border. Now, we run into, um, we're actually probably closer than that, but uh, where the I-8 freeway is where we deal with a lot of the smuggling stuff is about 60 to 70 miles off the border what makes us unique is on the south end of our county there's a native american reservation the tano nation and uh, that actually extends into mexico there is no wall there's three strands of barbed wire fence some normandy barrier at best um, and so we have always experienced a lot of trafficking coming through the reservation and uh, it, even though you're seeing a lot of families and kids showing up at the border what that does is that allows at the checkpoints that allows the cartel to push military age, age men from all different countries right through that desert area into counties like mine and then eventually into phoenix and throughout the rest of america as a sheriff are you powerless in a sense to really stop any of this because it's a federal issue you've got to call ice if you detain someone right how is that yeah, was, how's that playing out on the ground right now sheriff if you detain someone and then call ICE, what happens? That's a great question, John. And like I was going to answer your first question saying we're not powerless, but you're right. When we stop them, which we can do, we cannot detain them for long periods of time, more than an investigative uh, period of time. And so if ICE or Border Patrol cannot come and take them, which typically it's Border Patrol, and right now they're all forward deployed down to the border dealing with the amount of unaccompanied minors and families showing up. And so oftentimes it's kind of a crapshoot whether or not they show up to pick them up. If they don't, unfortunately, and I'm sad to say and embarrassed that we have to release them into our communities. Wow. Okay. So somebody is stopped in a car. Um, maybe they've been speeding. Who knows what, what the deal is? You look at license registration, all the typical stuff you'd ask for. You'd ask any driver for this. They have nothing. What happens? Unless they're breaking a law that we can put them in jail for, which would be a misdemeanor or, or a felony, there isn't anything we can do. I mean, we can tow the car, and the, but we've got to release them on foot or have somebody come and pick them up. Uh, it is very frustrating. You're going to see a video come out in the next couple of days. We haven't put it out because of the uh, we're dealing with the fires right now. But we had a video where my video guy was in with one of our canines. Typical stop where they run from us, then they bail out, which means they all just shoot out of the car. Uh, we ended up catching the guy that shot out of there, but he was being, the vehicle was being operated by a 15-year-old. A 15-year-old. Wow. That's what the cartel's doing. They're using juveniles because they know that we're going to go lenient on them, and they're probably not going to go to jail or eventually prison. So unless they're committing a crime, and to answer your question, there isn't anything we can do. Are you seeing a lot of this Central American traffic versus Mexico, uh, um, Mexican nationals coming across the border? Is it, are you seeing a lot of this Central America movement? Absolutely. We see a lot of uh, every nationality, uh, predominantly Hispanic, Mexicans, of course, uh, but then we also have Guatemalans, El Salvadorans. Um, anybody that can make that 60 day, 60 mile hike through the desert which is increasingly more difficult as we get deeper into the summer. Anybody that can do that, that's who we're going to run into. Um, and like I told you, they're usually, you know, military age men, middle aged men, men that can actually do that uh, trek through that desert. Uh, and they're not wanting to get caught. They're all in camouflage clothes, camouflage backpacks, carpet shoes on. I don't have any layups in my county. Nobody comes here to give up or seek asylum. Yeah. Every single one of them is trying to sneak into this country. Uh, just for people who 
haven't been down to the border. The carpet shoes, they put carpet on the bottom of their shoes so they leave no footprints. They're very hard to track that way because Border Patrol is very good at that. Mm -hmm. Sheriff Lamb, is there a change in dynamic in terms of has it become more violent? Has it become more confrontational? Uh, are you seeing a shift in kind of what you're seeing, the people you're seeing, and a propensity toward violence? We can see that shift happening. Uh, the propensity toward violence right now is starting off by the amount of pursuits we're having, the bailouts. They have zero regard. They don't want to be caught. They've come this far. They don't want to be caught. But on a national level, we are seeing the mainstream media and we're seeing our politicians continue to attack law enforcement and undermine the rule of law in this country. And that doesn't that extends all out to the uh, cartels and the people trying to come into this country illegally as well. We are seeing a, a, a shift, albeit a little bit slower with the immigration stuff. We are seeing a shift towards violence, towards dangers to our community. And let's not even this is we haven't even started to talk about the amount of fentanyl and dangerous drugs like methamphetamine coming into this country. Well, let's let's jump off there for a minute. Um, how has this issue affected Pinal County? You would think Pinal County, you know, being a, more in the interior of Arizona, by that point, you know, people are fanning out to all kinds of places, but has this changed things in Pinal County? Yeah, it has changed it. You know, we were typically a marijuana corridor, but with the uh, passing of the legalization of marijuana here in Arizona, um, we saw a shift. And now what we see is they're bringing more uh, hard drugs, more synthetic drugs. They can produce them 24-7. And we're no different than any other community across this country. We are seeing the effects of it. Now, the one, I guess you could say good thing, I hate even saying it like that, is that the majority of the humans being trafficked into this country and the drugs like fentanyl and methamphetamine are not designed to stay in counties like mine. They're designed to filter throughout America. As a matter of fact, they're going to get a better price in Chicago or, Illinois or, uh, or Iowa for the fentanyl and for the methamphetamine that they do here in Arizona. So um, we do see it. We've seen an increase in overdoses. Um, I think during 2020, we had 754 COVID deaths uh, during 20. Uh, and during that same period of time, we had 795 overdoses. Now, granted, not everybody died. And those are the only the only the overdoses we know about. Yeah. So, yes, as a parent, is a major problem as a parent, that stuff scares the living. You know what out of out of you, because, I mean, one bad choice and you could your your child could end up dead. Sheriff they Lamb, uh, for, for, the, for the cynics out there, say, well, illegal immigration and, and unlawful entry has been happening forever. This is being politicized by Republican sheriffs and Republican politicians. Do you, do you have an answer for that? I would disagree. I would say it's being politicized by the Democrats um, because I believe that it's not about politics. It shouldn't matter whether you're a Republican or you're a Democrat or independent or wherever you're from. If you care about human beings, then you should absolutely care about border security. The cartel is abusing people's rights on a daily basis. They're using the children as pawns and oftentimes abusing them. They're raping the women. They're extorting the men. And that's not to mention the amount of drugs that they're, they're bringing into our communities and hurting our families across this country. So I think the only politicization that's going on, I don't, I don't, I don't think I said that right, but... Uh, that's going on right now, I think, is from the left. Look, I was very vocal about immigration stuff during President Trump as well. But President Trump worked hard to help us fix those issues. He listened to us. But I haven't had any communication with the federal government since then, other than the people within the Tucson sector of Border Patrol and ICE. Outside of that, nobody's communicated with me. And I, though I'm not a border county, I deal with this stuff on a daily basis, yeah, yeah. and in many cases, more than they do. That uh, kind of shadows what, what Cochise County Sheriff Daniels uh, told us a few moments ago. Listen, Sheriff Lamb, I sure appreciate it. We're running out of time, but thank you for your time, and uh, we'll have you back soon. Thank you. Thank you, John. Okay, good to see you. Uh, also, a reminder, if you want to pass on the program to someone, or look at an old program or, or re-watch re this one. This is a place to go, fox10phoenix.com slash newsmaker. You can find the programs there. We're back in a minute. Thanks again for joining us on Newsmaker Saturday. You can reach me on Facebook or Twitter, John Hook Fox 10. We will see you next week on Newsmaker Saturday.